Hi, this is Linda from MyBar, and today we're going to take a look at advanced intercompany journal entries. The first thing we need to do is look at our subsidiary structure within the environment, and you can do that in two places. You can go to the subsidiary page, and this will give you a list of all the active subsidiaries and their hierarchy structure, or if you have the subsidiary navigator installed like I do here, it will be on your home page. The one thing to note about the subsidiary navigator is to look at which subsidiary is selected. As you can see here, I have US1 selected. And what this means is, is that I am restricted to just this particular sub. All of my transactions, my KPIs, my reports, anything that I would do would be restricted to just this sub. For the advanced intercompany journal entries, I don't want to have the restriction. So I'm going to choose the highest level of the subsidiaries so that I have access to the entire environment. Here is a, a health insurance bill that was originated in US sub 1. And what it is, is it's an insurance bill that needs to be allocated amongst all of the North American subsidiaries in the environment. So the way I'm going to do this is, is I'm going to use the advanced intercompany journal entry. And I'm going to show you two different ways to use the advanced intercompany entries. Right now, I'm logged in as a controller. So in order to get to this page, I would do financial, other, make advanced intercompany journal entries. And if I click here, it'll bring me right to this page. The advanced intercompany journal entries work uh, in a similar fashion to the regular journal entry. You, you pick the date, the posting period, the memos. The difference though is, is you would choose an originating subsidiary. By choosing US1, it's going to auto-populate the currency that's the base currency for that particular sub. It's also going to populate the first line of the journal entry. Advanced intercompany journal entries need a minimum of four lines, um, like two for each subsidiary. What needs to happen here is, is not only does the journal entry need to be in balance, but the debits and credits need to balance on the subsidiaries as well. I've already started this particular journal entry just to kind of save time and to, to show you what it does. So here, I've selected, you know, the US one and my debits and credits tie, same with the Canadian one, and I still need to do the, the US two. But this, this way of doing the journal entry, I get to choose the general ledger accounts that I wanna have here. Um, and so in this one, I'm gonna choose, you know, the insurance expense. But before I do that, I wanna show you something here. Not only is it showing you the base currency right here, but it's showing you the currency of the different subsidiaries. So here we have a gross of 25,000 on the Canadian side, but it's gonna be posting in the Canadian subsidiary for the 16,035.92. So let's just finish this particular journal entry and notice that I am getting to select all of the GL accounts here. Um, and it will just auto populate. We're going to hit add and we're going to come to the top and we're going to just hit save. And if I were to look at the GL impact, you would see what I just showed you with the, the different currencies. So here's what's posting for the Canadian sub. It's showing you here the base currency for Canada. The other way of doing the advanced intercompany journal entry is like this. And again, we're going to choose US1 as our originating subsidiary. Notice it populated on the, the dollar. And notice also the first line populated US1. So I'm going to type in my prepaid expense. And we had it as a, a debit of 45K. I'm going to now choose Canada and I'm going to choose the insurance expense. 
debit that for the 25K. And I'm going to pick US2. And again, insurance expense. And it's going to be 20K. I'm going to hit add. But now, instead of creating all the line levels myself, I'm going to hit the auto balance button that you see here. In order for this to work, you have to have automated intercompany management enabled in your environment, and then you can use this functionality. So I'm going to hit the auto balance. Notice it's working here. It just takes a minute. And now look, it has created all of my different lines. So here's the three that I needed for the US one, here's two for the Canada sub, and here's two for the US two. The one thing that you do need to note though, is here on the elimination pieces, we have to have a name. So I'm gonna just add my, my name in here. Oops, sorry. And then I also need to do it on this side. And I have my intercompany vendors as ICV, and I have my intercompany customers as ICC. And pick US1. And again, we need to do it on this particular line as well. And then I can save my entry. So now if we were to come into the income statement and we changed this to be this, but then the subsidiaries here, and we want to do all subsidiaries, we're going to hit refresh and we should see amongst the other ones. Now my insurance is going to be a little overinflated here because we did the two entries instead of the just one. On the balance sheet, you're going to kind of see the same thing. We're going to have the subsidiary there and we are going to hit refresh. And because of one was done by the auto versus the other one by me doing it by hand, we have two different places. So here, you're going to see the 45,000 right here for the intercompany auto balancing. That was the uh, GL accounts that are naturally, or automated, they're, they're selected automatically based on the, the accounting preferences, what was selected there. Um, and this is where it populates for here. Notice it's US1 and it was the 45K. If we come down to the payable section, you're gonna see the AP, intercompany auto balancing. And here's the 25K for Canada, here's the 20 for US two. So that's that, that second journal entry I had done for the automation. Um, and if you looked at the my original one, I had used the do to do froms and here's you know the different breakdowns of the different subs there. So it's just a matter of what your preference is and the GL accounts that you would prefer to use. Um, and again, you know, both ways are, are, are perfectly acceptable ways of doing the journal entries. They work great. Um, I, I use um, them both for different reasons. So, you know, I, I hope this was helpful, helpful to you. And if you like what you've seen here today, uh, feel free to reach out to my bar and book your personalized demo with our team. Thanks for your time and hope you have a great day.